The Saudi stock exchange Tadawu started the week's trading on a downward trend as its key index dropped more than 2% and dragged down by the recent attacks on the kingdom's key oil facilities. Now the Tadawu oil share index lost around 2.5% as it hits 7,000 629.49 basis points after the opening bell. Now, the, the drops was reportedly led by Al Raji Bank and Saudi Basic Industries Corporation, both of which slide around 3%. Consequently, a few days later, the drone attacks on Saudi facilities, Brent crude price reopened early on Monday, appreciating between 15 to 20 percent. Now, this is its biggest jump in 28 years in what may be a boom to exporters such as Nigeria. Now, this is the portfolio reaching you from ATA News 24 here in Abuja, Nigeria. I'm Chimobi Walter Naja. And this week, we will be taking a look at the diplomatic impact of the xenophobic attacks in some African countries on the Intra-Africa Free Trade Area Agreement. But first, let's join Comfort and Modu on the business news segment. Hello, Comfort. What's the latest? Thank you, Chimobi. Of course, there are lots of stories making the rounds at the moment with Niger getting ready for another economic summit as the federal government says it is making effort to ensure that stable macroeconomic conditions and business climate in Nigeria to keep transaction costs low, encourage savings, investments and job creation. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, disclosed this ahead of the 25th Nigerian Economic Summit, saying this year's edition will be setting a new agenda for for Nigeria to key into the fourth industrial revolution. Will in no small measure build a competitive private sector economy that will guarantee the needed economic prosperity of Nigerians. A competitive private sector led economy can achieve a rising standard of living and economic prosperity for more than 400 million Nigerians by the year 2050. The minister also inaugurated the board of directors of the Family Homes Fund, a federal government initiative to bridge the housing deficit. And with the confirmation of the loss of more than half of Saudi Arabia's production following the drone attack on the kingdom's oil refineries, analysts project that oil prices could rise to $80 a barrel as the attack resulted in a production suspension of 57 million barrels of crude oil per day. The tax have also wiped out the global spare capacity which plots analytics estimate to be 2.3 million barrels per day with more than 1.6 million barrel per day. However, OPEC Secretary General Mohammed Barkindo has expressed satisfaction that the situation at Aramco has been brought under control by the Saudi authorities. He affirmed that OPEC and the International Energy Agency are closely monitoring the situation in Saudi Arabia as security of all supply remains top priority of all producing countries. Meanwhile, President Mahmoud Buhari says Nigeria stands in solidarity with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity to the President, Garbashi, who condemns the attack on Saudi oil refineries, saying it represents economic warfare, recounting Nigerians' past experience where saboteurs sought to undermine government's developmental efforts. And away from Saudi, President Mahmoud Buhari has constituted a new Economic Advisory Council chaired by Professor Doin Salami. Special Advisor to the President, Media and Publicity Femi Adishina says this advisory council which replaces the current economic management team will advise the President on economic policy matters, fiscal analysis and economic growth as well as global economic issues working with the relevant cabinet members and heads of monetary and fiscal agencies. And that's it on the news. I'm Comfort Amadou Dongwewe. Portfolio continues.
All right, thank you very much, Comfort. Moving on now, leaders at the 28th African session of the World Economic Forum Africa rose up from the forum with a resolve, you know, that it is time for less talk and more action. And this is in line with the resurgence of xenophobic attacks on other nationalities in South Africa and other African countries. How will these affect trade on the continent and what is the way forward? Are Nigerian businesses ready to be part of this form of trade? And what needs to be done to maximize the opportunity? Now, these are some of the questions to be answered by our guests on the program today. I'm talking of the Managing Director, Abuja Enterprise Agency, Arabi Mohamed Tukar. You're welcome to the portfolio. Thank you, Antia. Thank you, esteemed viewers. All right, so just before we go into the topic of discussion, the recent attacks you know, and destruction of some major oil facilities in Saudi Arabia has become so worrisome and, uh, you know, to a lot of uh, um, um, industry key players. Is, is this actually a blessing or a curse to Nigeria? First of all, like you said, it is very much worrisome in the sense that um, this is the first time such a massive attack is being um, inflicted on a country and a country like Saudi Arabia that is a major um, oil produ producing country. Um, to answer the question, it is both ways. It is um, a curse for the whole world in the sense that um, time will come when the, the, the oil price will crash. And it is a blessing for some of the countries that are the oil producing countries like, like Nigeria. Now, you'll find that the revenues of these countries will now jump up. But if adequate plans are not made um, and Saudi Arabia comes back to, 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 to the full stream of production, uh, the oil prices will crash if, if care is not taken down to below um, 40, $40, $40, $40 dollars per barrel. So I, I, I think it is both ways. It is both a blessing for uh, countries like Nigeria that are um, looking for money to, 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 to put in, in, the, um, in its development. And it is also a curse because time will come when these countries are not um, uh, adequately ready to, to, to face the downturn of the prices. will find it very difficult to, to survive. All right, um, let's now get into the discussion. Uh, I do hope that uh, some of those uh, issues you just raised earlier, you know, won't get to that point where yeah, nah. it becomes uh, problematic for Nigeria. Mm. All right, so now, given the spate of uh, trade, you know, um, inconsistency between some African countries and Nigeria, um, how can, you know, this uh, form of inter-African trade be sustainable in Africa, especially as it relates to Nigeria? I think the wisdom of the um, African heads of states or African presidents in coming up with the African um, Continental Free Trade Agreement is a, is a wise one in the sense that um, if you look at what is happening in the Europe, European Union, you'll find that there's nothing that is better than coming together to play, to play um, a game. And it is indeed a game in the sense that the whole block will be able to trade in the various commodities given the um, competences that they have in the different areas so each country will be able to take an advantage and get its um, products sold or moved from one country to the other without hindrance um, it creates ease of doing business it creates jobs for um, the team of people that are within the region, as well as uh, the gener generation of wealth. So um, for us that are observing the agreement, it is indeed a welcome idea. Uh, as much as there are some gray areas that um, have been highlighted in the, in the agreement, but I want to believe that the uh, committee that has been put in place by Mr. President is going to come up with a strategy that will make this agreement sustainable. All right. I mean, Nigeria is, is, is known as um, a consuming nation, so to say, and despite efforts being made by the country's MSME sector, you know, to bridge the gap, um, what needs to be done again, you know, to place Nigeria in an advantage position as far as this uh, trade is concerned? Yeah, Nigeria is still a consuming country, 
but I think the narratives are being changed now in the sense that um, a lot of industries are beginning to rise to their responsibilities and um, if we continue with the trend of developing the industries by putting in the required infrastructure, the required technology, the required personnel, um, very soon this will be over. Nigeria will no longer be a consuming country, but it will be a producing country that will export what it produces. Um, you can see what is happening in most of the states. I want to particularly give a ref um, reference to what is happening in the um, Cross Rivers and Aqua Bomb states where a lot of industries are being built. Of recent, I watched um, very interestingly uh, Cross River State Government, no, it's Aqua Bomb State Government that came up with an industry that is capable of producing 30 tons of cocoa um, products. This is very exciting. If all states will come up with this strategy of putting in the, 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 the infrastructure to boost the production capacity of Nigeria, time will come when we will no longer be a, be a consuming country but an exporting country. Now, the issue of infrastructure really has been um, one, one major concern you know, of uh, development. Whatever you talk about development, infrastructure mm. is top on mm. the agenda really. Mm. Um, how much more needs to you know, to be done really, both at the federal, state and local government level, you know, to capture these groups of persons whom we have seen as uh, uh, the, 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 the gold-plated uh, a coin, you know, to move Nigeria forward. Yeah, the, the, this administration has done a lot in the last five years. Mm. Um, you can see a lot of um, infrastructure is uh, are being built. The power uh, infrastructure is also upgraded. I, I look forward to more being put in place yeah. in terms of um, access to road infrastructure where goods can be moved from one point to the, to the other without hindrance, access to power where the small business owner will no longer use his generate, generator to, to power um, whatever appliances he has in his shop or in his um, uh, uh, workshop to produce a particular product. Um, if this can be upped to the next level, I want to believe that um, we will no longer have people that can come to us to say, we don't have what to do, we are looking for jobs. And one exciting thing um, based on my experience in the Abuja Enterprise Agency, we have realized that most people in Nigeria are enterprising. Most people in Nigeria, particularly the youths, are very creative. It's a matter of harnessing these potentials that are in them. And I want to believe that if we're able to do it with what the government is doing now in terms of developing the uh, MSME development plan, if this is um, fully implemented, Nigeria will no longer be a country where job creation or unemployment um, will look into our eyes to uh, say it's a devil. All right. Uh, I mean, <laughs> looking at the structure of these uh, trade agreements, you know, um, will Nigeria's porous border be a problem? Nigeria's porous border is still a problem. What um, was done some um, few weeks back where the borders have been closed. Partial closure. Yeah, the partial closure, I think it's, it's a good omen for the country. As much as yes, to some people, it will look as if government is inflicting pains in those people that are doing their, their trading at the borders. But the damage is much more um, glaring if the borders are open. Mm. So I, 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 I am an advocate of some restrictive measures being put in place at the borders mm. where certain things should not be brought into this country. Nigeria should, be, should not be a dumping country where everyone brings in whatever he feels like and dump it in the country and get away. We need to put some restrictive measures to ensure that it is only what is required in this country that is 
brought into this country. So despite you're saying what you're saying is despite the, the Nigeria being signatory to the free trade movement, you know, the, the agreement, uh, there should be some measures of yes, restriction. There, there should be some measures of restriction. That, that's why I said there should mm. be some measures of restriction mm. in terms of what is to be brought into the country and what is not to be brought into the country. Yes. We have no business importing rice into this country. Mm -hmm. Presently, Nigeria produces rice to an extent where this quantum of tons of rice that are being produced can be exported. Same thing with maize. You have no business import, importing maize into, into Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with what Cross River State did again in producing um, uh, pencils and toothpicks, you have no business produ um, uh, um, importing toothpicks and, 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 and uh, pencils into Nigeria. So as much as it will be seen as if um, government is inflicting pain in people but to a large extent yes there's pain now but at the long end of the journey it's going to be much more pleasurable for everyone like you did mention earlier you know the abuja enterprise agency as well as other government of uh, organizations and establishments have made efforts tremendous efforts you know to empower small businesses in the country you know uh, what areas does nigeria have comparative advantage you know that such that if we if we begin to harness you know those areas we we stand uh, better opportunity better chance for agencies like us the abuja enterprise agency as a matter of policy, we have made it that we should focus our minds on rural uh, um, development. If you let me give you an, an, a particular example with the um, FCT itself, you have over 890 communities in the in the FCT. Mm -hmm. Of these 890 communities, over 700 are in the rural areas. You have an estimated population of 8.2 million that are in residents of the FCT. 6.3 to 6.5 million are residing in the rural areas mm. and 60 percent of this population are youths that are idle so if you don't look at this issue and face it to ensure that you nip it in the bud you'll end up having a problem in your hands so for us it became a policy of the administration, the FCT administration, and the Abuja Enterprise Agency to focus our minds on rural, rural uh, entrepreneurship development. Now, a lot have been put in place. We faced about 160 communities where we developed cottage industries. Our major focus now is agriculture, where we focused on share butter production and cassava production. Both the agriculture um, uh, production um, projects are value chain projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for, for the records, FCT and Niger State contains 60% of the share, um, share, share nuts trees in West Africa. We have no business uh, getting the share nuts and sending it to another country mm. to produce chocolates or other products that will be so what, what, what really what what is being done in the areas of uh, um, processing and value addition in these uh, uh, areas you've just mentioned the share share production yep. and of course cassava mm -hmm. yeah but we we are still working on the infrastructure uh, we are yet to reach the stage where we can beat our chest to say, okay, we are ready to, to export. We are, we are talking to uh, NEPC. We are talking to other stakeholders. And of recent, a development partner came in and is giving us the technical support to ensure that the right infrastructure is being put in place. The capacities of these people that are in the, in the, in the industry are developed. And the, pro the products that will be produced are produced to the best standards that could qualify exportation. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking with you and having you on the program. Uh, I've been speaking with um, the uh, MD and CEO of Abuja Enterprise Agency, uh, Arabi Mohammed Tucker. Many thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. All right.
Moving on now, it's now time to take a look at, you know, what, how the capital market fared last week. And Bossidi Abel is our guide, and I'm sure she's standing by to give us an update. Hello and welcome to the market review segment of the program. The equities market recorded mixed performance for the second week of the month but ended upbeat following results from the presidential election petitions courts. In the week ended 13 September, the NSC All Share Index and market capitalization appreciated by 2.33% and 2.39% to end at 27,779 and 13.5 trillion naira. All other indices finished higher with the exception of NSC Insurance and NSC Industrial Goods Indices, which depreciated by 2.13% and 0.41%, while the NSC ASM Index closed flat. A total turnover of 1.1 billion shares worth 14.082 billion naira exchange hands on the floor of the exchange in 17,980 deals. The financial services industry led the activity chart with 840.7 million shares valued at 10.7 billion naira traded in 11,331 deals. The conglomerate industry followed with 111.2 million shares valued at 243.1 million naira in 963 deals. The third place was occupied by the ICT industry with a turnover of 95.087 million shares worth 605.1 million naira in 404 deals. Trading in the top three equities, Guaranteed Trust Bank PLC, Access Bank PLC and FBN Holdings PLC jointly accounted for 484.003 million shares worth 8.3 billion naira in 4,265 deals. A total of 6,540 units of exchange traded products ETPs valued at 23,650 naira 70 kabo were traded during the week in five deals, while a total of 274 units of federal government bonds valued at 280,932 naira 14 kabo were traded in seven deals. 39 equities appreciated in price during the week, 19 equities depreciated in price, while 108 equities remained unchanged. And now away from home. Global markets experienced positive boom after U.S. President Donald Trump said he would consider an interim trade deal with China. This came after sentiment around the trade war improved. Also, the cut of deposit rate by 10 basis points and launch of new bond buying program by the European Central Bank ECB helped show up sentiments. Nikkei rose 1.05% to close at 21,988.29. The Hang Seng Index added 0.68% as of its final hour of trading, while Shanghai Composite topped 0.75%. European stocks were mostly positive. DAX gained 0.47%, CAC 0.22%, and FTSE also gained 0.31%. In the United States, the Dow Jones Industrial Average posted its first eight-day winning streak in more than a year. It closed 37.07 points higher at 27,219.52, while the S&P 500 slipped 0.1% to 3,007.39. The Nasdaq ended the day down 0.2% at 8,176.71. While in Africa, stocks were mostly mixed amid xenophobia attack in South Africa. That was the market review for week ended 13th. September 2019. The rest of the program continues shortly. I am Boss Edi Abel. All right, many thanks, Bosse, and this is where we call it a wrap on the portfolio for this week. Do join us again next week for another interesting package, and of course, send in your comments on the numbers showing on your screen. Till next week, I'm Chimobi Walter Naji. Have yourself a wonderful week.